This learner got two faults on their test and passed in Barnet Test Centre. And I'm going to talk you through the test route. Now I've sped some of the bits up because obviously I don't need to sit there too long and be bored. But we're going to talk through some of the stuff anyway. So here you see how long is waiting there. It was, it was there for over a minute. I, I counted it actually. It was there for over a minute waiting. And I always say this by Barnet Test Centre. Don't rush to come out of that spot there. You can get really busy. Just be patient until you see a nice safe gap and then go. It's quite, it's easier when it's busy actually, because then people are likely to stop for you. But uh, if it's, if it's non-stop traffic and there's no gap, just keep waiting. Here they're going down the road. They're going to start following signs for the A1000, which means they've got to switch lanes to the right hand side. He's done that very well. And you can see by the sign there, see, A1000 is to the right. And it's also written on the, on the ground as well. So it makes it nice and easy to see. going up towards High Barnet. Now it splits into two lanes here. This is where you want to start moving over back to the left lane because we drive on the left unless we're overtaking or turning right. So if the road is clear, you want to be on the left hand side unless it's busy for some reason. So which is uh, what Alone has done very well. They've gone in the left lane, excellent work. And then further down in the distance, I don't know if you can see there's a bus there. When you see buses in the in the way like this far away and especially if they're not moving, you want to start thinking about going to the right hand lane nice and early, which is what a learner's done there. That's really good. Check your mirror's signal, make sure that uh, there's no one too close to you and then change the lanes, which is done excellently there. Taking his time is that the bus is taking a bit of more space than normal to come out of that bus stop, which was good because there were a bit in the lane that he was in and very good awareness there. So if you're in your lane, don't just think, oh, I'm in my lane, I'm just going to keep going. Think about bigger vehicles that might go into your lane a little bit when they're trying to come out of certain spots. And you've done that very, very well. So here they could ask you to go left uh, further down or they can go, they can ask you to follow the road towards the right. So if they've asked you to follow the road towards the right, you want to stick to the right hand lane like our learner is doing right now. But if they said to you, we're going to follow it towards the left, you want to start moving over to the left lane when it's safe. But I think on this one, they're going to go towards the right. So you see branches off there, you can go towards the left, towards the college, or straight down towards the right here, towards uh, the high street, towards Barnet High Street. So a little bit of roadworks there. It seems like there's a lot of roadworks around nowadays, so guys, be cautious of those. Be ready for those temporary lights as well, because sometimes people miss those. And you want to treat them the same as a traffic, a normal traffic light. If it's red, you've got to stop and look out for those signs that tell you where to stop. And now it's going towards the left further down because the road splits into two again there. We're going towards the left towards the country roads where it's going to turn into a national speed limit soon. And you see there the sign for the national speed limit. Very easy to miss because it's kind of camouflaged between those trees there. But once, it's, uh, once you see that sign, you want to start building up your speed. Not too much at this stage, though, because you see there's still parked cars about. There's probably people around there as well. But once it starts to open up a bit more, you can go a lot faster. Remember, on a single carriageway, it's going to be 60 miles an hour uh, maximum speed. But this road here is quite rough. There's a lot of bumps and it's really uneven. So you don't really want to be doing 60 here fully because it's, it's, it can feel very rough. Do what feels comfortable. Then we turn left at the, at the roundabout. Now we're coming up to the junction where we're coming up to the A1. And now this is a dual carriageway and it's still national speed. You notice there haven't been any changes in the speed limit signs. So it's still national speed, but now because we're on the dual carriageway, it's 70 miles an hour now. So you've got to be really careful when you join it. Here, the examiner did give him a fault. They gave him a, an observational fault because he came out when a van was coming down the road. And the examiner said it could have been a serious nearly if that van didn't move but luckily the van moved into the other lane otherwise this van here otherwise that could have been a serious fault so remember those guys are going really fast on that road there so take your time make sure you've got a nice big gap before you try to join it and then here following signs for Boreham Wood
and then up this road, up this ramp here where it's quite curved. So you want to go in a bit slower, gear down if you need to. And then turning left into the roadway. Now 30 miles an hour. So you notice the big drop in speed. So earlier we were doing 70, then it went down to 50. And then now uh, it's 30 miles an hour. So you want to be really careful here and be cautious of your speed. Because it can feel like you're going slow, even though you might be doing like 35, 40. You won't feel it because you've just come off a high speed road. So be really careful there. Then at the end, turning left. Very difficult to see on this junction here. You have to really stretch uh, to look over your shoulder to actually see what's coming down the road. So do that. Take your time and only come out once you're happy that it's safe. And then turning right down this road, apparently a footballer lives down this road somewhere. Not sure exactly where. So if you're a football fan, if you're driving down here, maybe you can look out for them. Pulling over on the left in a safe place. And then driving on again. So you're going to get a lot of that way. They pull you over and then drive on again. It's just about doing it safely, making sure you look all over, make sure you look all over before you start moving off. Then at the end of the road, turning left, I believe this road is called Mayor's Lane. So at the moment it's 30, but it does turn into a 20 a bit further down. And it's a 20 for a very long time, which can be tricky if you're not sure what the speed limit is or if you've got someone behind you just remember it's the speed limit even if people are behind you trying to make you go a bit quicker ignore them and just stick to the speed limit and don't go beyond 20 miles an hour so nice and clear at the moment not too much going on then you've got a meeting situation Dealing with that nicely. You notice the gap he's left between uh, his car and the car that's parked. And then now he's moving off. Plenty of space to play with. So don't get too close to the car that you're stopping next to. Give yourself room to move away nicely. That was really good. So that's where the 20 mile an hour sign is. And that's where the 20 miles an hour begins. Then they've asked him to pull over again on the left. I've skipped this bit, so he's driving on again. So here, watch the way he's moved over to the left a bit and then straightening up. This is really good. I've got another video where the learner didn't actually do that and they ended up clipping one of these things on their real test. So you notice the way he moved over to the left a bit. That's how you got to deal with that uh, width restriction there. Because if you don't, you're going to go in through at a weird angle and you're going to find it really difficult to go through there. But I learned that he had done that really well by moving a bit to the left first, then going straight through. That was really good. Then near the end of this road, we're about to turn right. So normally when you're coming down this far, you'll be thinking, yeah, the test is nearly finished because the test center is just behind there. But they've gone to turn right and then to turn left to do a, a manoeuvre in this car park here. I think the learner mentioned that the examiner forgot that there were roadworks here and they were supposed to actually <laughs> go somewhere else. But they, they forgot that there was uh, roadworks there. And here they come in here to do a forward bay park. So with this one, it's just about starting really wide. So if you're parking on the left like we're doing right now, you want to start really far away towards the right, check a mirror, signal, and then swing the car in. So make sure you check out the video on how to do a forward bay park if you're finding that hard to do. Then it's about looking around nicely and then reversing back out. And then checking again and driving on when it's safe. And 
Now, coming out of it was a bit tricky because you see the van on the left there. It's parked up there. It's going to block the view a bit. So it's quite hard to see now on what's coming from the left. But I learned I dealt with it nicely. I think the examiner... Oh, also, there's a light there. That's why it's made it tricky because... Remember there was a temporary light before we turned? So from there, you can't see whether it's red or green. And um, our learner was just waiting for a gap when the other car started moving, then he would know it's green. But I think here the examiner helped them a bit to start going forward. Otherwise, I could have been there for a long time. You're going to get situations where the examiner will help you a bit if it's, a, if it's really tricky, if it's something that's a bit out of, out of the ordinary. So um, don't be too scared to go on test, guys, because examiners are generally really nice and they, they will help you in situations where it's a bit tricky. Then here, we're just turning right back onto Mays Lane, going towards the test centre. Turning right at these traffic lights. I think we're back on the A1000 again. Very good. Okay, that was a really good stop there because you see the first car went through, uh, which they, were, they could do because it was just turning amber as they approached it. But then our learner stopped. It could have been very easy to just think, oh, the other car's going through, so I'm going to go through as well. But that showed that they're really aware, so that was really good. Now, going through these lights, for some reason, the people that are in the right-hand lane, I've seen t t like nine times out of ten here, they'll try to go past you. Let's see what happens here. So he's in the left-hand lane, but they're merging into one. And you see that car behind is starting to go forward a bit, but then I think they've realised what's going on and they've backed off a bit. That's really unusual. Usually they'll try to squeeze past the learners there. So be really careful there. If you're coming to the end of your test and you're going through that junction there, be careful of those cars that will just try to go past you there. And then here, just turning right. Make sure it's safe before you turn here because you're coming up to the end of the test. You don't want to get too excited. Just be patient and turn in there nicely. And he ended up getting two minor faults. I can't remember what the other one was exactly, but one of them was on that dual carriageway. But he done really well and he passed. So thank you so much for watching that video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to watch more like this, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.